Hey GED students, I have a great example this time and just want to thank the student, let me try to say her name, Shuman Yai, maybe, maybe, who sent this in. To, uh, she is in my Facebook group, which is free GED resources from Light and Salt Learning, and she posted this problem. It's actually from the GED Math Crash Course Experience Level Practice of the probability lesson in data analysis. Um, and it's a great example for the GED because it's one of those that looks uh, complex. You can use a nasty formula for it that's not on the GED formula sheet, but it's actually not nearly as hard as it looks. All the counting and the probability that's on the GED is of a simple variety that you don't need any nasty formulas for. So we'll take a look at this example. But before we do, I also just wanna say a really quick thank you to the two people who came alongside me to support me yesterday. Got a new member committed to yearly support actually on Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you, Andrea. And a new monthly patron on Patreon. Thank you, Jill. Um, it is because of you guys, my generous uh, donors, that I'm able to do what I do. Because as you know, I don't charge for any of these resources. But let's get going on this problem. So it says, if you roll a standard die four times in a row, what will be the chance that you roll a number greater than four each time? So for my students who are maybe out of the country, not familiar with games, you have no idea what I'm talking about rolling a standard die. Good news, I've never seen a dice problem on the GED, um, but I have seen problems of this type in other circumstances. Usually you're gonna see it on the science. Um, so don't worry so much, let it kind of roll over you if you don't know what a die is, because like I said, um, you probably won't see that on the GED, but a standard die is we uh, call them when we have multiples, we call them dice, but it's that little cube that has the dots on it. You know, it'll have a one on one side, a two, three dots, and then it goes all the way up to six. So basically what we have here is six sides and the sides say... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, or six, depending on how many dots are on them. So what you're gonna notice here is that I'm doing an action more than once. I'm not just rolling my standard die one time, I'm rolling a standard die four times in a row. Um, and now this does come up on the science test when you are doing an action repeatedly or you're doing multiple actions and you want to count up how many possibilities there are or you want to count up the total probability of all these different actions happening. So super important to understand that when you have multiple actions happening or multiple choices to make that we are going to multiply. Okay, so multiple actions happening or multiple choices to make, we are gonna multiply. So if I roll four times in a row, I'm gonna have to take the probability of me doing it the first time and multiply it by the probability of me doing it the second time and multiply it and so forth and so on. And so because I'm rolling four times in a row, I'm gonna be multiplying four numbers. Now what are those numbers? That is gonna be the probability or the chance that I roll a number greater than four each time. So let's come back to our dice. We're only looking for numbers greater than four. Let's get a different color here. So take a look at all my numbers here. Well, the only numbers I have greater than four are five and six. So how many numbers are greater than four? Well, two of them. Now, remember, when you do probability, it's wins, like the thing that you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for numbers over four out of total. Well, how many total sides are there on this dice? Six. And so I have a two out of six probability that I roll a number out of or higher than four, greater than four the first time. But I'm not rolling it just once, I'm rolling it four times. So what's the chance that I do it again? Well, the second time, it's gonna be the same probability. Every single time, and this feels wrong to students. Students feel like it should get less and less probable each time, but no. Every single time I roll, I'm gonna have that same probability because I'm gonna have two sides out of six sides that are 
a greater than four. I'm not using up the sides of the dice. It's not like it disappears after I make a roll. And so for each one of those four rolls, I'm going to have this probability, two out of six. Now, super duper great, gorgeous, glorious news. If you're freaking out right now because you don't know how to multiply fractions, um, don't worry. <laughs> you get a calculator when you do any kind of fraction work on the GED. And if you're like, I have no idea how to use that GED calculator, Kate, go to the crash course go to unit zero, lesson six, and practice with that puppy. It is a little challenging to learn at first, but once you do, it's going to open so many doors for you. But I don't know where I put my calculator. Probably my kids stole it. And also, I'm not scared of multiplying fractions. So I'm just going to go ahead and do so. And I think I'll do it the intuitive way that students Nah, I'm going to cross reduce and multiply. That's the easy way. And I'm lazy. Again, you can do it in your calculator. Okay, you can do 2 6 times 2 6 times 2 6 times 2 6. Uh, but I'm going to cross reduce because I'm so lazy. Oh, I didn't even have to cross reduce. I could have reduced each one of these to one third. Both 2 and 6 are divisible by 2. Uh, so I divide the two out of the two, I get one. I divide the two out of the six, I get three. So all of these reduce to one third. And now it's super easy to multiply because I can just multiply across the top. One times one times one times one, of course, is just one. That was easy. Uh, three times three is nine. This three times three is also nine. And nine times nine is 81. And so what's the probability or the chance that I roll a number greater than four each time? It's one out of 81. Now, some of you guys are probably saying, aren't we supposed to express probability as a percent? Or is it supposed to be a fraction? And my answer is yes. Either way is totally legit. Either way is totally right. I'm going to stop right here because I'm lazy and the problem didn't say I needed to do a percent. And this is an ugly number. It would not look pretty as a percent. It looks much prettier as a fraction. Um, and you might say, but which one will be right on the test, Kate? Yala always asks me that. But which one will be right on the test? Um, my answer is if two things are equivalent, equal, they're both right. If the GED wants one specifically, they will either tell you specifically, <laughs> okay? They might say, what will be the percent chance? Or um, uh, express it as a fraction. They might say that. Or they would just let you know by having multiple choice answers. <laughs> if all the multiple choice answers are percents, you'd be like, okay, I want a percent. If all the multiple choice answers are fractions, easy to know. Now, that being said, you might say, well, Kate, how am I supposed to know what to do if it is a percent? Again, I would tell you to check out the calculator uh, page on the crash course because I have a conversion video that shows you how to convert um, fractions into decimals into percents. It's not hard to do. It happens in your calculator. It's great. But we are just going to stop out of here. What are the chances that I roll um, a, greater, a number greater than four? Four times in the row, it's not a huge chance, but there is a one out of 81 chance. Nice. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, please drop it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it and we'll get smarter together. Okay, y'all, happy learning.